As more countries and companies set their sights on space, it may make you wonder, what's the end goal? Do we simply want to be a space-faring species? Exploring the solar system for the betterment of humanity? Or do people smell profit in space? While researching this video, I found out a lot of eye-opening reasons why mining in space, and especially on our moon, might well be something that we see happening in the next couple of decades. Why? Well, just wait until you find out what's actually there to be mined. The first substance is known as Helium-3. You may have heard of Helium-3 in sci-fi stories, as theory suggests it is the ideal substance for a clean type of nuclear reactor, with no radiation and no dangerous byproduct. It also has uses in medicine and radiation detectors. However, it is really rare on Earth. It does occur naturally and can be found in deposits of natural gas, for instance, but it's generally not viable to extract, as even in natural gas, there are only around 100 parts per billion. So let's say we had 1 billion cubic meters of natural gas, you'd only be able to extract around 15 kilograms of helium-3 from it. A lot of the time, that's not economically viable. We can also produce helium-3 as a byproduct of the radioactive decay of tritium. The problem with that though is that tritium is a crucial component of nuclear weapons. And so when the world slowed down the production of nuclear weapons, helium-3 stockpiles also started to diminish. Assuming we don't want more tritium in the world, it means we need to find another source of helium-3, especially if technology improves enough for helium-3 reactors to become a reality. Fortunately, we have a world in orbit around Earth right now, which has been bombarded by helium-3 for billions of years, thanks to the Sun. Earth's magnetic field deflects helium-3 traveling with the solar wind around the planet, whereas the Moon, with no magnetic field for protection, simply absorbs it in the top layer of the ground, called regolith. We aren't talking huge quantities, it has at most 50 parts per billion, but because it's all over the Moon, not just in tiny pockets, it can be collected alongside any other mining operation. It could also be used to power reactors on the Moon itself, which would help a Moon base be self-sufficient. Some people think that helium-3 mining on the Moon will not be viable, however China states that eventually mining helium-3 is one of the primary goals of their Chinese lunar exploration program. American, European and Indian scientists have all stated it is something they will consider further, and Russia is conducting a feasibility study on this right now. Even private companies are eyeing up the possibility. Because the parts per billion of helium-3 are relatively low, even in the moon's regolith, it would make sense that whoever was mining for helium-3 would also be mining for something else in the regolith at the same time. But what else can be found in it? As it happens, the lunar regolith is packed with different materials. Look at this false color mosaic of the moon, each color indicating different deposits of minerals found on the lunar surface. There are plenty of metals to be found on the moon in large quantities, like iron, titanium, aluminium, silicon, calcium, and magnesium. Some of these metals are locked into hard to access minerals and oxides, However, separating the metals will often also produce useful byproducts like oxygen and hydrogen. They are super basic and not rare on Earth at all, but unlocking these elements on the Moon itself will allow for a colony to be self sustaining, as oxygen means breathable air, hydrogen can be converted to fuel, and combining the two will produce water. Unprocessed regolith could also prove useful, as it could potentially be turned into lunacrete useful for building infrastructure on the Moon without having to transport the materials from Earth. Glass could also easily be produced from lunar regolith. And, as I mentioned in a previous video, while it's not super ideal, some plants can grow in lunar regolith, helping any lunar base to be self-sufficient in growing its own food, short of using hydroponics. But perhaps the most important resource found on the Moon are, ironically enough, metals known as rare earths. Interestingly, rare earths, which consist of this section of the periodic table, are not actually super rare on Earth. 
However, the difficulty in mining them is that they have not really collected into big deposits. Rather, they are dispersed through the Earth's crust. This means that they are exceptionally hard to mine on Earth, and there are only a few countries worldwide that have deposits large enough to do anything about it. Even then, most countries don't bother at all because of the massive environmental and human damages that come from the pollution of mining them. The only country that did not waver from these problems is China, as China has around 30% of the planet's rare earth supply. And because it is one of the only countries mining for them, they have a 95% control of the market. However, just as a side note, one of its big mines was actually found in Myanmar, and with the military coup that just took place, there might have been a shift in that mine's control. In any case, 95% control of the market puts China in a powerful position worldwide, especially seeing as these minerals are so valuable to our society, being components of various electronics and batteries. Because of the massive push recently to switch to electric vehicles with their huge battery packs, demand for these materials will only increase. So it's worthwhile considering where the minerals building these batteries come from. Are countries with somewhat sizable deposits like the US, Canada, Australia and South Africa going to start digging up their backyard to extract them? Or rather than pollute the earth further in our attempt to go green, is it actually more feasible to get these rare earths off the moon instead? Rare earths aren't any more common on the moon than on earth, however some deposits have already been identified and pollution on the moon would certainly not have any of the devastating environmental and human consequences attached to doing it here. As demand for these elements inevitably goes up in the coming decades, it could well be that mining for them on the moon becomes economically viable. And not only that, but a control on the market means control of the market price, and whichever country is in control will have a tremendous advantage. Will it be China maintaining their position? Or will some of the other spacefaring countries and companies want a piece of the pie? Only time will tell. Which leads on to another curious question. Who actually has mining rights on the moon? Well, it's a bit unclear. The main space treaty, which most countries in the world have signed up to, is called the Outer Space Treaty, and covers things like disallowing weapons of mass destruction in space, disallowing military bases in space, and disallowing claiming any celestial body. However, it doesn't really cover mining. Other treaties have been put forward which would cover mining in space, but so far only non-spacefaring countries have signed up for it. Right now, it could just be a matter of first come, first served. So, there we have it. A look into the future of what may occur on the surface of the moon. What do you think? Can mining on the moon ever be worthwhile? Or is it an expensive, dangerous pipe dream? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support. I love making videos like these. All the best and see you next time.